Hey there, welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brains player too. This week we're looking at the never-ending nuclear wasteland of Fallout 4. The previous three Fallouts began with your character already in a nightmarish world ravaged by a nuclear apocalypse, but Fallout 4 starts moments before the Great War kicks off, with a bang, and then puts our character on ice for 200 years. This not only allows for all the usual frolicking through a barren hellscape, it also sets us up to see the big event in person the day the bombs fell. It makes you wonder, what are our chances of surviving if the world's nuclear powers decide to smash that launch button? Now, before we get into the gory details, it's important to note not all nuclear weapons are created equal. The very first one used in World War II on Hiroshima generated all its kaboom by splitting atoms, a process called fission. The bomb used an isotope of uranium, U-235, which is special because it's fissile. When the nucleus is split, it releases neutrons that then split other U-235 atoms to keep the chain reaction going. The explosive energy released was equivalent to setting off 16,000 tons of TNT all at once. Today's thermonuclear weapons use fission to kick off fusion, smashing hydrogen isotopes together to create helium, kind of like smashing two cows together creates a Brahmin. This releases more energy and neutrons. Those neutrons then bombard a casing of the more common uranium isotope U-238, which isn't fissile, but does provide a little extra oomph when split. So it's fission to fusion to fission again, like a turducken of Armageddon. Using this system, the most powerful weapons in the United States' current arsenal can unleash the equivalent of 1.2 million tons or megatons of TNT. That's 75 times more energy than the first atomic weapons. If one of those lands in your city, the results would be about as pretty as a super mutant. Right at ground zero, the fireball that vaporizes everything would engulf an area over five and a half square kilometers and hit temperatures of 83 million degrees Celsius. Outside of the actual explosion, things aren't much better. The pressure wave of air would even level concrete buildings within two kilometers and still be strong enough to blow down houses as far as 4.8 kilometers away. People outside that won't go unscathed, as the heat from the explosion can cause fatal third-degree burns more than 11 and a half kilometers away. In the Fallout universe, people survive these by going to ground in vaults, fortified underground bunkers. The concept isn't far-fetched. For decades, the North American Aerospace Defense Command was located 600 meters under a literal mountain in Colorado. It had 25-ton blast doors and was suspended by 1,000 giant springs. With these precautions, it could withstand a direct hit by a 30 megaton nuclear weapon. Pretty good. Too bad the largest weapon ever tested yielded 50 megatons. And in the Fallout universe, it looks like all the time they spent not inventing the transistor went into nuclear research. I mean, they have nuclear-powered cars. Boy, I'd hate to get in an accident in one of those. Anyway, I'd say the odds are good that they have even more powerful nukes. So even if you're a vault dweller, your odds of surviving a direct hit are pretty much nil. But if you're far enough away that it provides some shelter from the heat and shockwave, you sport a decent chance. You may think then that the best odds of survival are to be far away from major cities and other likely targets, that you could just retreat to a remote island and wait for all this to blow over. And blow over it will, quite literally. Because along with all the aforementioned nastiness, nuclear bombs have another insidious side effect, radiation. Sure, the bomb releases an intense blast of radiation where it was dropped, and anything that isn't immediately cooked will probably die a slow, painful death from radiation poisoning. But worse, the bomb will kick tons of radioactive dust into the upper atmosphere, where winds carry it for hundreds of kilometers until it floats back to Earth like a man sprinkling salt on a steak. This is the nuclear fallout. Oh, hey, that's the name of the game! Nothing gets our nuclear fallout from vinyl wood! <laughs> Nothing! Radiation from a nuclear blast takes on many forms. It's really 50 shades of gray. Get it? Because gray is a, is a unit of radiation. It's equal to 100 rad. Anyway, there's alpha decay, where an unstable atom spits out a chunk of its nucleus, consisting of two protons and two neutrons. Beta decay, where it fires off an electron, or its positively charged twin, a positron. And gamma radiation, where the atom releases a high-energy electromagnetic wave called a gamma ray. And finally, there are the neutrons the bomb releases, which are not only dangerous in and of themselves, but they can be absorbed by atoms that normally have no business being radioactive, making them unstable until they unleash any of the aforementioned forms of radiation. All these forms of radiation are what's called ionizing radiation because they strip electrons off atoms. If that happens inside your cells, the resulting heat will burn the surrounding tissues, leaving you looking like a ghoul. But instead of immortality, you'll get a damaged digestive tract and bone marrow to boot, so you know, the opposite of immortality. And don't forget the damaged DNA, which doesn't translate to supersize or strength, unless you're talking about tumors. 
By the way, while rad is a real unit that measures how much radiation something absorbs, the unit that accounts for the different types of radiation and how they damage the human body is the sievert. Absorb an instant dose of 10 sieverts and your dog meat. There is a silver lining to this mushroom cloud. If you can wait out the radiation, it should drop to safe levels within a year or five. Of course, even then, you may have to wait for nuclear winter caused by all the dust blocking the sun to subside in another two decades after the food shortages caused billions more to die. And ecosystems will have totally fallen apart, what with so many species being wiped out from said radiation in many ice age. But in all likelihood, some humans somewhere will survive. And if you let a few hundred years pass, humanity might be able to scrape itself together and get running again. How about that? Fallout 4 isn't that far-fetched after all. Oh no. Hey, thanks for watching. If you still feel like Fallout 4 couldn't happen because it's in an alternate universe, then may I interest you in our episode on Bioshock Infinite here. If you like this episode, be sure to subscribe, and don't forget to keep on playing.